Good morning everyone. So just left the campsite in Smallville. It is uh, 9.30 a.m. already again and I'm walking uh, towards the original route now because the campsite is actually a bit off from the route. So I will meet uh, the Lofoten crossing route again in order then to show you the wild camping spot that was somehow marked on the map that you find on the internet on the internet will be interesting to see that one fun thing uh, it's just like 20 minutes away from the campsite let's see Sorry about the ending yesterday. It was definitely not what I had in mind, what I had planned. The only thing, uh, I can only come up with excuses, excuses. In the end, my own decision what I do. I don't think it's a bad thing to pick a campsite on this. It's not forbidden, yeah? It's actually very nice that you, at some spots, you have the alternative. You can do wild camping, but you can do, if the weather's bad like yesterday, you can go to a campsite. And yesterday, everything came together. It was raining, it started raining or drizzling when I still, when I still was up there on that, that plateau. I had to go 500 meters of elevation down in the drizzle, super steep, foggy, windy, muddy, slippery, dodgy, crazy. That was very tough. I had to slide down on my bump a couple of times because the, it was too steep and too slippery. Then my both of my calf muscles started to cramp. Fell on my knee, still not going to show that. It's not nothing bad, but some scratches. Yeah. So, the decision to use the campsite was done very early. Then I thought, okay, in this kind of weather, I'm not going to wild camp. It was very bad. But then I arrived there and then I asked, is there any upgrade? And I said, yes, you can have a room. Uh, it's basically like a... No, it's not, cannot call it a hostel, but it's a room without toilet and bathroom. It's all extra, yeah? You, if you have, the, have a room there, you share it with the campers. Shared kitchen, shared showers, shared toilet. You just have the comfort of not being out there in the miserable weather. And it was very bad yesterday. It was, I saw people arriving and they struggled to set up their tent because it was so windy and raining at the same time. It was not a nice evening to set up a tent. And uh, I slept eight hours. <laughs> Went to bed at 11, I think, after I had dinner and shower and everything. I wanted to get up at six, but... <laughs> I could have slept until 10 near the... Oh, so tired and the bed was so comfortable. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very low on energy already after two days. Every muscle hurts. In the morning when I get up, I struggle to stand up because the leg muscles hurt so much. This, is, this hike so far is definitely a different league. Cannot compare it with Kungsleden or West Highland Way because this is just very rough steep up and steep down yeah I hope I make it 
this morning I, I had negative thoughts and thought, okay, what, what am I doing here? I'm not enjoying myself, not having fun, I'm just suffering. Is this too hard? I don't know, I keep on going and the moment I have mixed feelings, it's very hard. But yeah, let's try it with the motivational with the motivational sentence for today. I am speed. I am speed. Okay, here we are. So normally you would come from this direction. I didn't yesterday because I crossed the bridge over there at the horizon because that was the shorter route from over there to get to the campsite but yeah normally you would arrive here in the bend and then it's difficult to spot the path it's basically just where these cable towers are if you look careful there's a, there's a path going in here so let's see how wild it is definitely uphill but I can give it a go so that would have been my end uh, yesterday evening in the rain and in the wind to find that white camping spot up there because before there wasn't really anything around the lake so you can tell that it's not used much Okay, sort of maintenance path maybe for the cable. Yeah, it will get wet again with all the wet bushes. Whatever, all for the video. So the ground is soaking wet. Yeah, because of all the rain yesterday, it's completely saturated with water. I wonder if it's the same up there, the white camping spot. But good conditions today for hiking, <laughs> especially downhill. It'll be fun. Almost at the top. Oh, yeah, good. If you camp here, you can have fresh blueberries for breakfast. Well, it's a good one. Let's see. Yeah. All blueberries, to the left and to the right. All blueberries. Okay, found it. I think that's the area here. It's just at the end of the electricity cables. I think this is. Let's see how the ground is. Yeah, it's. It is wet. Very wet ground. on a mat and you don't mind at least it's very soft <laughs> I don't think it gets softer and wetter than this after the whole night of rain so if you arrive here after a couple of sunny days it could be better conditions is there any other spot or is it just this I don't know I think it's just that so maybe on to three tenths and here it's already getting very uneven oh well you can try well, anyway that's a spot that was suggested uh, by that Lofoten crossing website it's scenic yeah good view over the lake and that's now exactly where my day three starts, yeah, of the itinerary. Uh, day three is a bit, depends a bit where you want to end it, yeah, where you find a camp spot. It is between 13 and 18 kilometers, really depends. So it can be between five and eight hours plus my usual 50, 75%. Oh, it's a long day. Should be 500 meters of elevation change. There's one very steep pass in between, so I have, will have respect of that. Will be another killer. 
super super steep up and dodgy slippery down I, I saw videos yeah <laughs> but let's stay positive I am speed you guys are speed too today with me okay little leather over there oh hmm interesting a bit of a climbing this morning okay <laughs> oh. Okay, survived it. Looks very nicely towed here. What is it? Yeah. Rope is towed to a tree trunk. So someone's looking after the path. Good, thank you to whoever does this. Thumb up. Good view of Swalwell here. That's where we came from. End of that that cable thing. Interestingly, then you meet this natural path, it's like a rock, natural rock line. <laughs> and on my map, that is where I'm supposed to go down. Yeah. Okay, at least in dry conditions. It has a lot of grip, no problem at all. I don't know what kind of rocks they have here. I will research it and put it put it down in the description. It's very grippy. Also yesterday when it was already wet, I realized that this kind of rock was fine. I just lacked the trust yeah, to go steep downhill on it when it was wet. Okay, continue here, all the way down there over the lake okay you survived it the red path without a name <laughs> oh. Ooh, good wake up I oh, should be flat for a while along the road here So there are a couple of things that I'm already doing wrong here, I think. First of all is in the morning before I leave, I should hydrate properly, yeah? Just drink, 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 drink. Because I always fill up my bottle, start hiking and then I get thirsty. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Second, if it starts drizzling, Put on the rain cover. I don't know why I didn't do that yesterday. Put it on immediately. You don't know how long it's going to drizzle. Better be safe. Same with the rain jacket actually. Yeah, it's a hassle. But uh, yesterday I just thought uh, it's just a couple of minutes and it will stop raining or drizzling. But it didn't. <laughs> it was continued hours. So oh, it's not, not very smart. On a gravel road like this, or just flat, any flat path, where I don't have to focus on it, I have more time to think and I have more time to talk to you. But if it's in the mountains, if it's steep uphill, Deep downhill, I have to think about every step I do. I'm not I'm not thinking about other things. So here it's more meditative state, yeah. Things come and go, thoughts. But if it's really hard uphill or hot downhill, I'm not thinking. I'm just thinking about the moment, the path and where to put the foot next, what to do with the sticks, 
how heavy the backpack is. Yeah. So it's a bit less talking in these videos maybe than during the West Highland Way, which was mainly well, not flat but easy walking. I talked a lot there. So some people like it, some people don't. When I edit the videos I'm always surprised. Oh what the heck were you talking again for hours? No one wants to hear that. <laughs> Okay, I haven't seen a single other hiker so far. Well, apart from at the campsite. I know that there's one other couple doing the same 11 days itinerary I do. I know it because first I think I saw them on day one, right in the beginning on the way up. And then just before the summit on day one, there was a Norwegian guy and he asked me, hey, uh, are you on a long hike? And I said, yeah, I do Lofoten crossing 11 days. And he said, oh, you never heard of it, but I'm already the, th the third person. <laughs> he just had met a couple on the summit. I think it's the couple I met, that, you know, you can tell because they had very big backpacks. And he said, yeah, I asked them and they also said they do Lofoten crossing 11 days. And I was very excited, like he never heard of it as a Norwegian. And then I told him, yeah, it's not an official hike and, uh, and told him the website you can, where you can look it up. But yeah, now I know there's a, at least one couple who does the same itinerary. Just saw an elderly woman, she was sitting, sitting on the path here, just sitting there and knitting <laughs> and just looking out on the lake. And are you going to the waterfall? She said. I thought, okay, I saw a waterfall somewhere on the map and said, yeah, I go to the waterfall. And then she said, okay, she couldn't find a bench, so she had to sit down on the path. And her original idea was to pick blueberries, but then she said, yeah, it was too hard to bend down the whole time. Oh, very cute old lady. Yeah. Have a good day. Okay, dark forest here. Deep jungle here, deep jungle. Okay, so here the path leaves the path around the lake. It goes up there into the forest. I think that's where the climb starts. Hooray. All right, very steep here. Coming through the forest. Oh, that way. Oh.
So the shooting was a bit scary in the beginning. Uh, it's going on since like half an hour or something. In the beginning I thought it must be hunters. Are they hunting for moose? And can I go there? Because it's very difficult with mountains around and the lake to really hear where the sound is coming from because there's so much echo. I'm still not 100% sure. I know it's down there and I think it's on the other side of the lake. But I thought if it's just right in front of me. Uh, doesn't sound like hunting. Uh, it sounds like it's a shooting training place maybe. Because no one is shooting so much when he's hunting, right? <laughs> okay. Going up here. Now I know from other videos that we will pretty much go up this pike pipe or along it for 200 meters of altitude. So it's going to be fun. So sign says like hazard and going along the pipe is on your own wrist. risk 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 <laughs> yeah I quickly Google translated it just in case it says forbidden but now it just says own risk here okay yeah I know own risk I'm not going to risk anything I will check it out and if it looks too dodgy I don't do it here we go looks like path first goes underneath it you can see waterfall up there and we have to go all the way up. Oh, looking at the gradient of the pipe, it's not that bad. Okay, so far so good. It's not so bad, it's very overgrown. But you can see that someone tried to help here and make a path because sometimes there are little steps on the rock. And now that one is coming here. <laughs> The rope. Put the sticks away real quick. Then have hands free. Yeah, works well. Definitely helping the rope. It's a bit flexible. So gives in. That's already there at the top. Made it. The rope here. I think the scariest was just to step over this pipe from <laughs> that step to this step because <laughs> if you have short legs then you're, you cannot have both feet on the rock so you somehow you're sitting on the pipe and it looks like you have the imagination oh I'm going to slide down here so yeah it's sketchy Put the sticks away again because there are more ropes. It's getting a bit steeper now. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, those rocks are very slippery here. Yeah? Careful. I'm using gloves apparently. <laughs> they help because the rope is also very wet. Real life here. Yeah. I just came up this thing here. Yeah, there's three ropes there. That's vertical higher than you. I, I did four tries to get up here. Fuck. There's no way I can get down anymore. <laughs> How do you get down here? How do you do this like the opposite direction?
made it to the top. There was 200 meters of elevation just along here, along that pipe and the ropes. Lakes are shaking. Uh, look at the view. Oh. <clears throat> just when I had finished that difficult part where I had to climb and and I arrived at the top and I was screaming, yeah! <laughs> and then I looked up and realized, okay, there's, a, there's someone coming down. <laughs> and so, he can, I was, yeah, from up here. Right. So I just wait there and thought, okay, maybe he needs some help to get down there. But turned out it was an uh, older Norwegian guy. <laughs> he was like a mountain goat. He had like, Tray running shoes and a very small backpack and came down this stretch here very agile like and then laughed at me and asked uh, do you come up here often and he said yeah 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 come here often we go fishing up there in the lake he said <laughs> uh, then he just went down this actually he went halfway that difficult stretch where I was struggling. He went halfway and then stopped and wished me a good day and then went down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's move on. Path goes that direction. No, no, not, le not let's move on, but I am speed. That's the motivational speech. I am speed, I am speed. The water for the speed. And the path of speed too. Yeah. Goodbye this side. We are moving, crossing the path now and going to the other side. Let's see what we see there. <laughs> What's that? Let's see what we see there. Yeah, okay. Woohoo! Lake here. It's a little shelter. jacket and get some water. Okay, I have to try and find the path now that goes over the top here to the other side. It's not signposted of course. Chilly up here, cold wind. It seems to be I'm all alone. Oh, the people are hiding. I don't know. Look at their business here. Whew. There's a second, la second lake. There's sheep there. Yeah. How did they get here? Did they climb up the rope or something? <laughs> the problem here is that the path ends somewhere in this area. I cannot see any continuing signs or stonemen. So here you have to 
negotiate your way and find it. So according to the map, we should go up there to the lowest point there. I'm pointing there right there with my right stick. Because on there up there, around there will there will be a path ending which comes from the other side and we have to find that one. Yeah I'm lost. Those stone men were not very confusing. There was nothing. It was just I thought there was one but it wasn't. So <laughs> so I was up there. Then I realized okay I cannot get down there. So I came all the way down here now and now I'm just trying to find somehow a flat no, not flat but somehow a path in that direction. I make I just make a wild path up. So funny thing is I found a path with footsteps. Yeah. I have no idea where it started. Maybe there. But it's also pretty much going straight up, just winding. It was this little pile there that I was seeing from the bottom. And yeah, that's where I see what this path leads to. Just couldn't find the beginning of the path. Up here I already see the next one. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yes! <laughs> That's where we're going and try to find our camp somewhere around the lake. by this side of the mountain and let's move to the other side of the mountain. <laughs> Had some fun with the drone. Now it's time. It is 6 p.m. and it's still all the way down. Eh? We have at an elevation of 400 and I'm sure the lake is at zero so we have to go 400 down. Looks there will be another steep, muddy, slippery path, <laughs> I assume. <sighs> yeah, there it is. Somewhere there along the way. So far the trail is fine, it's very steep, goes along there, over to the horizon, yeah, from there. It's very steep but at least not slippery or anything, so I have good grip and I can very well use the sticks. So, yeah. Can I already see my sleeping spot? Hmm. Yay, the path turned into a mud festival. Hooray! <laughs> oh, 
what a mud slide that was what a so yeah legs are dirty again shower effect didn't last that long <laughs> oh sorry changing the hand ah. Ah, well, it's good to be out there Whew. but it's nature yeah i mean i think sheep also use this path that's how it goes <laughs> one funny story so the whole day i haven't met anyone well apart from that uh, norwegian guy on that uh trail up that the pipe thing <laughs> so i was going down here just thinking about the mud and me 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 and like 20 minutes before i had a snack and so i was going down going down and then suddenly because i thought there's no one here i'm alone i did the loud burp yeah like burp <laughs> and, and right in that moment five meters behind me was another hiker <laughs> i just realized turned around and said oh sorry that's the things you do when you think you're alone <laughs> i'm glad i didn't fart <laughs> like a private hut here or shelter or I don't know I would say private hut you say oh there's so much so much space for tents here yeah not really the ground is super wet it's also marked on the map it's kind of wetlands so you can hear when i walk here and this is the path yeah <laughs> i got lost here of course two or three times because the path is sometimes Sometimes you lose it, if there's a big area, you know, and you have to, which is very muddy, and you walk around it, suddenly you have lost the path, because there's, there's no real marked path here. So yeah, whenever I, I got lost and I was on the, off from the path, I sank in, yeah, like my shoes sink in. I don't know how much, five, seven, eight centimeters. So it's not good camp condition for a tent unless you put it on, on wooden wooden planks. Goodbye sunshine. That's my sunset here. <laughs> so my idea is to find a camping spot at the shore of the lake. Not here. The shore seems to be a bit more rocky and well, I've seen other people camping there in videos. So that's my idea and therefore I have to remember now to fill up my water bottles, both, because I still have the one and on that side of the supermarket. I need both, then I have enough water for dinner and for breakfast tomorrow morning. Yeah. Hello bird. Ah, oh, you're a loud bird. Okay, I found a bridge. I hope it's still working. Yeah. Problem is, it's a bit too high here. Get the water from here. I hope it's fresh water at all. Just because it flows in that direction should be fresh water that flows into the salty lake. This looks good. It's a little excess here to get down to the fast flowing water. I prefer having that.
So the lake has a lot of space to expand for high tide or storm. So good reminder again to not stay too close to the shore because I think that might be low tide. If it's the same then the first night means the high tide will come at night and then I don't want, I don't want my tent to get flooded. <laughs> I am speed. I am speed. I am speed. So with the path here on this side of the lake, it's interesting because on the map there are two paths. One coming from this direction, the one I'm on, and then there's another path coming yeah, from the opposite direction. And these paths are not connected on the map. Also, if you want Google Maps to find you like a, like a path, it says, yeah, there's no connection. But everyone does it. So I believe there is a way. I hope so. I think I know I know why there's no path. Because checking on the map, I'm on the stretch now where there is no path. And as you can see, I'm basically walking on the area that is flooded, I think. So that's why. Being in low tide, you can walk here. It should be the whole day. But then, when there's high tide, this will be all the water. I can tell that the, the ground is wet and smells in a way as if water comes all the way here. On my map, this is the spot where the path from the other side ends. Should be here. Doesn't look much different so far. The only difference is that it's marked. Okay, it's a bit more away from the from the shore. So tonight, dinner is creamy chicken, yay! Okay, dinner's ready. The creamy chicken looks a bit watery. Hmm. But I'm sure I will like it. Look at that. Tent. <laughs> it is beautiful. I wish I could sit here the whole night and just watch it, but it's almost 11. I have to make sure I get some sleep, otherwise I will be destroyed tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a long day. So I'm going to the tent now. It's a bit colder here, so I'm sure I will need the sleeping bag. So I'll get ready in the tent and then I will say goodnight. All right, tent camera. Good night from day three. Today was another super long day for me. 
it's interesting. How oh, cool, pretty cool uh, to climb up that pipe. Yeah? It was very hard and I really struggled. For a moment I thought about, okay, now I have to go down again because I, I cannot go further here. I could not climb up. So I thought, shit, I have to turn around now. I have to go down. What do I do now? How, how do I get down this slippery, slippery thing? Um, yeah, definitely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> and yeah, now it's 11 p.m. I hope I can get some sleep tomorrow until 5, 6. My experience from the first night wild camping is that I, I struggle to fall asleep until 1 or something because I hear so, so many noises and I always think, oh, what was that? What was that? What was that? Of course, it's nothing, but yeah, the mind starts playing games. A uh, little look around here, don't look at my feet. Oh, pretty. Oh, here are the socks. <laughs> yeah, can be happy that there's no smell on this video. <laughs> okay. I think I will, yeah, sleeping bag I will need later at night. At the moment it's warm. And usually at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I think, and then I wake up and then it's cold and then I use the sleeping bag as a blanket. All right. Thank you for watching. Day number three. See you tomorrow. See you in the next video. I'm Speed. Goodbye and good night. I hope that the scenery behind me can equalize the scenery of my face. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up, Matzi. Super Arctic cold wind. I'm speed and I go slow. Thank you for whoever put the toilet there. Tired, just functioning. I'm still alive, still here. 9 p.m. Still on the way.